Hey there guys, how's it going? So coming up pretty soon, we've got an interesting heavyweight fight between Adam Kalnatsky and uh, Robert Hellenius. Now, this is a fight that has been rumoured for quite a while. In fact, I think I first heard of the potential of this fight before Robert Hellenius fought um, Gerald Washington last year, where of course he got brutally knocked out in the 8th round. And um, I remember going into that fight, I, I was... I thought that Robert Hellenius had a very good chance of winning that fight, personally, but I was very, very um, conservative with my prediction because, as you guys know, um, if you've been following Robert Hellenius's career, you know, he's just a very, very um, inconsistent fighter, and he's a fighter who's had some very, very bad injuries and some very, very bad layoffs, and he's also very, very hot and cold with his... Um, you know, shape in the ring, he, he, he tends to fight really, really badly out of shape, you know, he's not an athlete at all, and um, doesn't really have great stamina, doesn't have great speed, so, you know, when he's on a good night, you know, he can be quite powerful and quite accurate, and he can box a bit, and, you know, I've seen him pull off some pretty, pretty, you know, unexpected victories, like he had a very good knockout win against uh, Erkan Tepper not that long ago, but then you get other fights where he just completely underperforms and, you know, just doesn't look interested and ends up getting beaten by somebody you expect him to beat. So I was I was understanding of that going into that fight, so I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go. This fight, however, against Adam Kalnatsky, now, I have pretty much no doubt how I think this fight's going to go. First of all, I think it's going to be an absolute shootout. I think Adam Kalnatsky, I mean, we know how Adam Kalnatsky fights. Okay, the guy's very front foot heavy, throws some nice straight punches to the body, you know, backs you up. He's very slow footed and very, you know, plodding in the ring, but he's powerful. You know, carries a lot of power and he's very stocky and he's got a granite chin, you know, got a lot of stamina, throws plenty of punches. He's going to come forward in this fight. He's going to target that body from round one. He's going to get right up on... Robert Hellenius's chest, and he's going to break Robert Hellenius down, and I think that Adam Kalnatsky is going to knock Robert Hellenius out, that's how I see this fight going, I think that Robert Hellenius, you know, even with the physical advantages he has in this fight, much taller, um, you know, bigger puncher probably on a good night, you know, when, when he's not dealing with injuries, he probably is a bigger puncher, you know, he also does have a, a very good amateur background, you know, he's um, got a decent jab, but the problem is he just, like I said, you know, he can't deal with the pressure of, of a high-volume fighter like Adam Karnatsky. And Adam Karnatsky is considerably tougher and considerably more well-conditioned at this stage than Hellenius. You know, Hellenius doesn't really have a great chin. You know, that's one of the things he has had a problem with his whole career. He, he doesn't have a great chin, doesn't take a very good punch. Adam Kalnatsky, on the other hand, does take a very good punch. So, you know, if this fight turns into a shootout, and if it turns into a, like kind of like a phone box fight, you know, where the two guys are trading punches, the guy who's shorter, who's better conditioned, who can take a better shot, who has, you know, more stamina, and who is more comfortable fighting on the inside is going to have the advantage. And I think that this is going to be a brutal knockout victory for Adam Kalnatsky. Probably within the first four or five rounds, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I think he's going to slow Robert Hellenius down to the body, and I think he's just going to catch him, and I think he's going he's gonna to stop him. Um, Robert Hellenius, of course, has a puncher's chance. And, you know, going into his fight against um, against Erkan Tepper, which was in Erkan Tepper's backyard in Germany, a lot of people thought he was going to lose that fight, you know, kind of like how I just described against um, Kalnatsky, but in that fight, Hellenius actually turned up in very good shape, and Hellenius actually boxed very well behind a jab, and that was, you know, him kind of winding back the clock, but in this fight, I think that Adam Kalnatsky, in my opinion, is a much more consistent fighter than Erkan Tepper, you know, Erkan Tepper was a guy who himself was quite, instant, you know, inconsistent with turning up in shape and whatnot, um, big puncher, you know, tough guy, but not really an athlete, Adam Karnatsky, you know, who doesn't look like an athlete, I think he's more athletic than he looks, I think he's got very good stamina, and I, th I think he's got very good durability, you know, comes across as a very tough and hard-working fighter, very durable, very determined, and they're, you know, always looking for the knockout, and he just came off a fight against Chris Ariola, where he went 12 rounds and threw a lot of punches, so... I think that he's more than ready to duke it out with somebody like Robert Hellenius. I actually think he might prefer this fight 
to the fight against Chris Ariola because Chris Ariola was a guy who was more similar to himself, you know, more front foot heavy, lets his hands go. And I think that he was kind of um, challenged by that in a sense. You know, it's kind of like how Mike Tyson used to prefer fighting back foot movers, you know, who were taller than him and lankier than him so he could get inside and bob and weave and knock them out, you know, and, and, and make it his kind of fight. Whereas when he fought somebody like Holyfield, who was more technical and more rugged on the inside, a guy who would take the fight to him, you know, a guy like Buster Douglas, uh, you know, guys that were more similar sort of size to him and more similar sort of style to him, he didn't really feel comfortable with that. You know, he was no longer able to push them back and make it his kind of fight. They kind of beat him at his own game, you know, made it their kind of fight. And I think that that was why he had trouble with Chris Ariola. I think that that was why Kalnatsky, you know, was probably expecting the Chris Ariola fight to be like his more recent fights prior to it. But Chris Ariola was was trying to match him on the inside and trying to throw a lot of punches. So I think that he was kind of surprised by that. And I think if he fought Chris Ariola again, I think he'd stop Chris Ariola. I think that Adam Kalnatsky would have learned a lot from that fight. And I rate Adam Kalnatsky. And I would, I would give Adam Kalnatsky a good chance against any of these tall, like, sluggish heavyweights like I, th I think that if he were to fight Deontay Wilder I think he would give Deontay Wilder a very tough fight I'm not saying he would win but he'd definitely give him a very tough fight you know I'd like to see him even fight Anthony Joshua you know maybe he could sort of emulate what Ruiz did I mean I don't see it personally but I mean it's definitely possible maybe he could do it because I just think he's very good against that type of style um as far as you know how he matches up against Hellenius I mean I mentioned Hellenius got knocked out by Gerald Washington not that long ago. Well, Adam Karnatsky knocked Gerald Washington out in two rounds. Um, I watched that fight live. You know, it was um, it was on ITV4 over here. I remember that. So, yeah, um, <laughs> Adam Karnatsky, I like watching him fight. I think he's very entertaining. I like watching him, you know, just fight some of these taller guys. And it's quite impressive to see how this little chubby looking guy, you know, who doesn't look like an athlete, is able to break down some of these taller, more athletic fighters. I mean, standing next to Gerald Washington, and I did a post-fight review for that fight, um, and I mentioned how, you know, standing next to Gerald Washington, he, he doesn't look like an athlete, but he was able to hang it in, hang in there with Gerald Washington and break him down so quickly, despite not looking like the more chiseled of the two. He was the sharper of the two. He was tougher. You know, he was just more of a fighting man. And even though standing next to Hellenius, Hellenius towers over him and is much more physically imposing, a much bigger and probably a much more physically strong guy, Karnatsky's just so much tougher and just so much more durable. And I think he'll just break him down, man. I think he'll just get in there and just mess him up on the inside. And yeah, I'm expecting a knockout within five rounds. I really am I'm expecting Karnatsky to work the body and knock Robert Hellenius out within five rounds. He might even survive a scare, like he might get caught early on. Because like I said, Hellenius, you never know. Hellenius is powerful when he's, when he's on a good night. And when he's not dealing with injuries or anything, he can be powerful. So maybe Karnatsky might have to walk through some power shots. He might have to deal with a jab on the outside. I mean, you know, Hellenius in, in the past has shown good fighting skills he's shown decent you know sort of a bootleg klitschko-esque ability like where you stick a jab in your face and look to set up a lead left hook or a right hand you know he's knocked out some pressure fighters like he knocked out Sergei Lakovic and he knocked out Samuel Peter you know he beat Derek Chisora in a, in a tough fight where he where he was fighting with one shoulder basically and that that was a fight that you know basically messed his career up because um, he was injured prior to it, and, and the injury got exacerbated, and ever since that fight, it's like he's, he's looked very, very um, hot and cold in fights, you know, very lackluster in fights, I mean, if you look at his fight against Franz Real, he had a lot of trouble in that fight, I actually thought he lost that fight when I first saw it, um, despite the knockdown, but um, yeah, I, I just don't see him being able to keep somebody like Adam Karnatsky at bay, I think Adam Karnatsky is too tough, too durable, and I think he'll break him down, and I think he'll stop him probably within the first five rounds, and I only really give Hellenius a puncher's chance, so yeah, picking Adam Karnatsky by stoppage, first five rounds, um, how do I see Adam Karnatsky, Let, let's assume I'm right here, you know, I'll talk about maybe Hellenius in a minute, but how do I see Adam Karnatsky, assuming he wins this fight and wins it comfortably, 
how do I see him matching up with some of the other like top heavyweight contenders? Like, how would a fight between Adam Karnatsky and Dillian White go? I mean, that's one fight I'd like to see. I mean, Adam Karnatsky, you look at some of the guys he's beaten. I mentioned Gerald Washington, Chris Ariola. He knocked out Artis Spilka quite early, much earlier than Deontay Wilder did. Um, it was kind of reminiscent of how Derek Chisora was able to just pressure Spilka and break him down so quickly. Um, Adam Kanatsky, he also defeated that guy um, Iago Kilzadi. I think he was trained by Freddie Roach. And Adam Kanatsky, I, I, I'm very impressed by. I really am. I do think he's a very good fighter, very physically, um, you know, physically fit with his stamina and his hand. You know, he's got decent hand speed. It's not the best hand speed, but it's decent. You know, for a, for a guy as chunky as him, and I just think that. It's good to see in the heavyweight division we do have some of these shorter guys, you know, who can take the fight to some of these big behemoths like like Tyson Fury and Wilder and whatnot and Joshua and all these other guys. And and I would just like to see maybe before fighting one of those guys, maybe let's see um, Adam Karnatsky face off again some other tall guys like a Hellenius who he's fighting, you know, just to see how he deals with the movement and stuff like that, you know, against somebody who's more in their prime. Um, <laughs> maybe even like a, um, like a David Price or somebody, Let, let's just see him fight some more tall guys just to see how the styles match up, because I would be intrigued to see Kalnatsky mix it up with Joshua, and that is a fight I could see happening, you know, I'm, you know, Joshua with, um, what, whoever he's gonna fight, Pulev or whatever, I would totally like to see him fight Adam Konatsky. I think it would be entertaining. I think whoever Adam Konatsky fights, I think whoever he fights, it's going to be an entertaining fight. I really do, because he's just got a very entertaining style. Very entertaining fighter. Um, and I mentioned Dillian White. I think that would be a great fight, man. And, and Dillian White, you know, just can't seem to stay out of trouble, can he? And he just can't seem to get himself that title shot. You know, he's been trying to get a title shot for years. He's been up there in the rankings, but... Either he turns down a, a fight with Pulev for a mandatory or, you know, he, he ends up failing a drug test or whatever. But there's just always stuff in the way of him getting a title shot. So maybe, you know, they could stick him in with uh, Adam Karnatsky. Adam Karnatsky, I did see a video of him sparring with Jarrell Miller. And I think he slightly got the better of Jarrell Miller. I'd like to see that fight. That would be an absolute war. Absolute brutal fight. You know, two come-forward brawlers with granite chins. And I think that would be a really fun fight. You know, it would be really entertaining. Um, maybe, you know, if, if Joshua and Pulev falls through for whatever reason. Or, or if, if, you know, if the IBF goes vacant, he might get a shot. At the vacant title, maybe against Pulev, that'd be a good fight, man. Pulev against Kanatsky, um, probably slightly favor Pulev in that fight, if I'm being honest. But I totally watch it, man. It'll be really entertaining. So Adam Kanatsky, I think, has got a bright future in this sport. I really do like this guy as as a heavyweight contender. He's probably one of my favorites right now. And um, yeah, obviously he'll have a decent following because he's from Poland. You know, they they love their boxing over there and you know, being based in, in the US, you know, there's a big Polish contingent, so he, he definitely does have a lot of fans, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this guy, even though he had problems in his last fight with um with with Chris Ariola, the veteran, you know, and I, I still thought, even though he had problems with that fight, you know, Chris Ariola is a guy who can give you problems on a good night, and I just think that if you give Adam Konatsky the right opponent, he will shine, I really do think he will, and um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of fights out there for him that, that are going to be, they're going to make for some memorable nights. I think whoever he fights, it's going to be memorable. Like, whoever he fights, is going to be entertaining. So that's pretty much all I've got to say about this fight, man. I mean, as for Robert Hellenius, you know, you guys know I've, I've been a big fan of his. I've got a lot of, a lot of nostalgia for me when it comes to Robert Hellenius. I just remember watching a lot of his fights live and, you know, I remember supporting him early on in his career. I was a big fan of his early on in his career, and I, I did genuinely think he had the potential to maybe become a world champion one day, you know, maybe fight the Klitschko's and whatnot, but I just think that he's a fighter, and I've, I've talked about this many times on here before, I just think he's a fighter who um, had his career ruined completely by injuries, you know, I, I genuinely do think that injuries were the main cause of this guy's destroyed career, you know, he, his career was absolutely wrecked by injuries, and it's a real shame because, you know, I mentioned, you know, going into the Chisora fight, he had a, a bad shoulder and he broke his hand. 
And, um, you know, when he fought Michael Sprott, I remember watching that fight live and he actually broke because going into the fight, his hands weren't wrapped properly. That was the thing. It caused a, um, a big lawsuit with the Sutherlands and that was what led to their relationship ending. And I just remember that there was a, um, a huge like controversy there. Like he didn't have his hands wrapped properly and he ended up breaking both of his hands in the same fight. I saw the photograph of it afterwards, and it was quite bad. You know, two broken hands he had. And, uh, you know, when you break both your hands in one fight, that's that's pretty much your career done for a while. And he was out of the ring for over two years, and he was just never the same again. So there's a lot of nostalgia for me with this guy, but I don't think he'll ever be, like, a proper contender again. I just think Robert Hellenius will be in journeyman territory, more than likely probably when he loses this fight. So that's pretty much... Um, all I've got to say about this man, I don't really know what else to say, but um, yeah, Adam Konachki versus Robert Hellenius, I think it's going to be somewhat entertaining, um, I, I think it's going to be a fight where Adam Konachki is going to really, really show what he's made of, because he knows after his last fight against Chris Ariola, he knows that he's going to need a good performance here, you know, he knows that he's going to need to impress and he's going to need to show that what he's made of in this fight. So I'm looking forward to this one, man. I really am. And, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about it anyway. You know, do you guys think it's a good fight? I really do, personally. Um, and do you guys think that Adam Konatsky could trouble any of the big boys at heavyweight? Like, how would he How would he fare against Deontay Wilder? You know, how would he fare against Dillian White? How would he fare against Tyson Fury? You know, how would he fare against... Um, Alexander Povetkin, who's 40 years old now, you know, how, how would he, how would he, um, fare against Anthony Joshua, Kubrat Pulev, you know, how, how would he fare off against any of those guys, let me know what you guys think about that in the comments section, um, thanks for watching, and God bless each and every one of you, stay vigilant.